It is well known that for many centuries Ukraine was part of various countries. But few people are aware that in the early 20th century Ukrainians themselves established about a dozen of their own state entities. And you will be surprised to learn that they were not only located within the territory of modern Ukraine. The early 20th century was a time of empires collapsing and the emergence of new states in their place. Many nations sought self-determination and the creation of their independent states. The Ukrainian people, suppressed by other states for many centuries, aspired to independence. The events that followed the disintegration of the Russian and Austro-Hungarian empires were crucial for shaping Ukrainian national identity and asserting it on the world's political map. Several independent Ukrainian states were established, the knowledge of which is scarce today. We will attempt to fill this gap. Today we are talking about Ukrainian states and the nation-building efforts of the Ukrainian people. Watch this! On March 8, 1917, the February Revolution ignited in Petrograd. Within a week of street confrontations, Tsar Nicholas II abdicated the throne, and a republic emerged in place of their empire. However, the country immediately found itself in a dual power situation. The temporary government took the helm of executive power. On the other hand, in the regions, workers and soldiers' councils were formed. These groups found themselves in opposing positions. The temporary government, true to its promises to the Entente, advocated for counting World War I, preserving private property and democratizing society. The councils, in which left-wing parties played a leading role, demanded an immediate withdrawal of Russia from the war, the abolition of private property and the establishment of a social system. The revolution in Petrograd provided a powerful impetus for the development of national movements, including in Ukraine. Just a day after the abdication of the Tsar, the Central Rada was established in Kyiv a representative body of political, social, and cultural organization. It was led by the renowned and respected historian Mikhail Hrushevsky. Shortly after, a 100,000 strong demonstration took place in Kyiv, demanding national territorial autonomy for Ukraine. This demand was supported by Congress of Ukrainian Parties. Concurrently, throughout March and April 1917, the process of forming councils was underway in the regions of Ukraine. In April, an all-Ukrainian National Congress was held, and it was decided to seek autonomy as part of a federative and democratic Russia. The Central Rada was joined by deputies from various regions and social classes and began to perform the functions of a temporary Ukrainian parliament. In May, it initiated negotiations with the temporary government in Petrograd regarding the recognition of Ukrainian autonomy and the determination of its borders. Initially, Ukraine's demands were ignored. The temporary government continued the national policies of the Tsarist regime, initially denying the right of the numerous nationalities of the former empire to self-determination. Therefore, on June 10, the Central Rada issued the first universal, proclaiming the autonomy of Ukraine. Additionally, a temporary Ukrainian government called the General Secretariat was established. The public figure and playwright Volodymyr Venichenko became its head. On November 7, 1917, a coup took place in Petrograd, and power fell into the hands of the Bolsheviks, led by Lenin. They established the Council of People's Commissars. By the way, few know that initially this government was also referred to as temporary. The day after the coup, the Bolsheviks attempted to seize power in Kyiv. After fierce battles, the Central Rada gained control of the Ukrainian capital. The Third Universal was adopted, proclaiming the establishment of the Ukrainian People's Republic, UPR. 
However, it was still autonomy within Russia. At the time, it seemed possible to reach a civilized division of authority with the Bolsheviks. Additionally, the Universal contained an extensive program of social reforms and promised to initiate peace negotiations for Ukraine's withdrawal from the war. Watch this! Upon seizing power, the Bolshevik government had no intention of sharing it with anyone. They considered the entire former empire their rightful conquest and were unwilling to grant autonomy to national regions. Therefore, the proclamation of the Ukrainian People's Republic UNR, caused extreme dissatisfaction among the new authorities. In December 1917, the Bolsheviks attempted to foment an uprising in Kyiv, but suffered defeat. They then convened an all-Ukrainian Congress of Soviets in the capital and presented to Central Rada with an ultimatum to surrender power. Despite intense pressure, the Congress delegates sided with the Central Rada, which rejected the ultimatum. The Bolshevik leadership's plans were foiled, leading them to initiate open aggression against the UNR. At the end of December 1917, the Soviet-Ukrainian war began. Red Army units occupied Kharkiv and declared the establishment of the Soviet-Ukrainian People's Republic there. On January 7, 1918, a 30,000-strong Russian Bolshevik army launched an offensive on Kyiv. In response, on January 22, the Central Rada issued the Fourth Universal, proclaiming the independence of the UNR. This independence was recognized by Germany, Austria-Hungary, Turkey and Bulgaria. Ukraine signed a peace treaty in Brest-Litovsk with promises of military assistance to combat the Bolsheviks, who by then had occupied a significant portion of the country. From its inception, the UNR was a parliamentary republic with democratic principles of a state building. The 1918 constitution enriched the principle of the separation of powers. At the time, the UNR was one of the most democratic republics globally. The UNR established diplomatic relations with over 20 countries worldwide, including Soviet Russia. The territory of Ukraine was cleared of Bolshevik troops. In April 1918, Pavlos Koropatsky, a descendant of a famous noble family and one of Ukraine's hetmans, gained popularity among high-ranking German officials. Skoropatsky was also proclaimed hetman. With German support, he came to power and instead of the UNR, the Ukrainian state was established. His rule became a time of national and cultural revival in the country. Institutions and universities were opened, an academy of sciences was founded, and the Ukrainian Autocephalus Orthodox Church was created. However, in December 1918, after the anti hetman uprising, the UNR was restored under the leadership of the Directorate, which became the supreme governing body. Ukraine enjoyed international support from the German and Austro-Hungarian empires. However, after their defeat in World War I, Ukraine was left without their assistance. The war against the Bolsheviks resumed, with the Red Army occupying Kyiv and parts of Ukraine. Following the Soviet-Polish War in 1921, the Republic's territory was divided between Poland and Soviet Russia. For over 70 years, the UNR government existed in exile. In 1992, the president of the UNR, in exile handed President of Ukraine Leonid Kravchuk, a decree stating that the Ukrainian independent state, proclaimed on August 24, 1991, was the legal successor to the Ukrainian People's Republic. Watch this! Before the First World War, a substantial portion of Ukrainian territories, Eastern Galicia, Bukovina, and Transcarpathia were part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In October 1918, as a result of the Triple Alliance's military defeat and the national liberation struggles of the people within Austria-Hungary, the empire found itself in a state of political disintegration. Several independent national states emerged from its romance, and Ukrainians also began their fight 
for an independent state in Western Ukrainian lands. On October 18th, the Ukrainian National Council was established as a representative body. The next day, it proclaimed the Ukrainian state. Initially, it was planned that this state would become part of a new confederation of all nations within the Austrian Empire. Plans were made to draft a democratic constitution, with the renowned legal scholar Yevhen Petrushevich as the president. On the night of November 1st, the Ukrainian siege riflemen seized almost all key institutions in Lviv. The creation of the Western Ukrainian People's Republic WUPR, had become a reality. Embassies were opened in the Republic of Austria, Hungary and Germany. Diplomatic missions were also established in Czechoslovakia, Canada, the United States, Brazil, the Kingdom of Italy and other countries. However, Poland, which had regained independence, regarded the Western Ukrainian lands as its territories. Chief among Józef Pilsudskis and the new government's priorities was the recreation of Poland within its 1772 borders, prior to the first partition of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The day after the siege riflemen captured Lviv, war broke out between Poland and the WPR. Within three weeks, the Poles captured Lviv and the Ukrainian government moved to Ternopil and later to Stanislavy. Additionally, Romanian troops began advancing on the New Republic and annexed Chernivtsi and the entire northern Bukovina. Negotiations between the UNR and the WPR about unification began. On January 22, 1919, the Act of Union of the two Ukrainian republics was solemnly proclaimed in Kyiv. The Entente powers attempted to reconcile the warring parties, Poland and the WPR. However, due to Poland's excessive territorial claims on Ukraine, this proved unsuccessful. As a result of the Polish offensive, a significant part of Western Ukraine was occupied. Throughout 1920 to 1923, the government of the WPR and Petrushevich consistently raised the issue with the League of Nations and the intent about the liquidation of the Polish occupation regime and the restoration of the independence of the Western Ukrainian Republic. However, Western leaders were interested in maintaining a strong Poland as a counterbalance to Soviet Russia and hesitated to make a fair decision on this matter. The WPR was a democratic state with a political system modeled on the legal norms of contemporary European countries. The Republic served as an example of Ukrainian statehood based on humanism and democratic principles. For example, during the entire existence of the WPR, despite the war with Poland, there was not a single case of oppression against the Polish civilian population, nor were there any Jewish pogroms. In the Republic, the Ukrainian Galician army was formed, which managed to revive Ukrainian military traditions in Western Ukraine. This tradition later became the driving force behind the Ukrainian insurgent army and other formation during the Second World War. Watch this! However, in Western Ukraine, during those years, it wasn't just the WPR that existed. Lemkovshina is a Ukrainian ethnic territory in the Carpathians, where an ethnography group of Ukrainians called Lemkos has lived since ancient times. In the distant past, these lands were part of Kievan Rus and the Galician Volynian state, and later became part of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth until its partitions. The vast majority of the territory was settled by Ukrainians. Due to the region's remoteness and the absence of major cities, which consequently led to a weak national and cultural connection with other Ukrainian ethnic lands, the national movement here began to develop in the late 19th century. As a result of the disintegration of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Lemkos desired independence. The establishment of the WPR and gaining control over Lviv created a domino effect in Ukrainian lands. When the proclamation of the Western Ukrainian People's Republic was made, the Lemkos decided to take action. 
On November 4, 1918, Prest Pantelimon Spilka convened a council in the village of Liki Wislok. More than 70 delegates from surrounding villages attended. The meeting resulted in the proclamation of the Eastern Lemka Republic, better known as the Republic of Comanche, as the main military headquarters were located in that village. The Republic comprised about 30 villages with a population of 18,000 people. Local authorities, a judiciary system and a police force were organized. Ukrainian language education was introduced in schools. The Lamkas considered their self-governance temporary, with their state formation being part of the WPR. Due to this, Polish forces initiated an offensive on the territory of the Young Republic. Despite the rapid escalation of the Polish-Ukrainian war, the leaders of the Republic of Kamancha managed to establish the functioning of the state administration. The court system operated fully, taxes and customs duties were established, and there was even a local intelligence service. Isolated from the WPR, Kamancha managed to create a localized from Ukrainian state authority. Simultaneously, the new republic faced challenges. The most pressing issue was the shortage of a capable military force and weaponry. The local police force was ill-prepared for full-scale battles with the regular Polish units, and financing was also insufficient. The existence of the young Ukrainian state was ended by the Polish army's advance. After three months of self-governance, on January 23, 1919, the Poles began the liquidation of the Republic of Kamancha. Within a week, the Polish army captured all the villages. A reward was offered for the capture of Pantelimon Spulka, but he managed to escape to Czechoslovakia and later emigrated to Canada. Thus ended the brief but remarkable history of the Comanche Republic. It demonstrated that the Lemkas consider themselves a unified Ukrainian people and desire unity with them. Watch this! The Lemka Russian Republic, another state entity in the region, existed for a much longer duration. In early November 1918, popular assemblies were held in various settlements in western Lemkovshina. However, there was no unified goal. Some wanted to join Russia, others the Ukrainian Republic, and yet others preferred to ally with Czechoslovakia. There was also a movement advocating for complete independence. On December 5th, in the village of Florinka, the Western Lemka Republic was proclaimed. Only proponents of the Moscow-oriented movement participated in this assembly. After discussions, the delegates decided to ally with Russia and oppose merging with the Western Ukrainian People's Republic. The Republic was led by Yaroslav Karchmarchik, a graduate of the Law Faculty of Lviv University. Over the course of several weeks, he and his supporters managed to gain control of several settlements in Lemkovshina. However, as joining Russia seemed unfeasible at the time, the idea of becoming an autonomous province of Czechoslovakia was proposed. While the initial activities of the new republic aimed at separating from Ukrainians, the Poles did not interfere with its self-governance. When the movement towards joining Czechoslovakia gained momentum, the attitude of Polish authorities changed dramatically. Pilsudski had no intentions of relinquishing Lemkovshina, and Czechoslovakia was not particularly interested in controlling this territory. Furthermore, the Republic keenly felt the absence of a professional army, financial resources, and experienced leaders. After 16 months of existence, in March 1920, Polish forces occupied the territory of the Lemka Russian Republic and dissolved the state entity. Its leaders were arrested and stood trial for treason. Their trial ended in acquittal because the defense proved that they had never been Polish citizens. Watch this! In Western Ukraine, there was another state entity, the memory of which was erased by the Soviet regime. 
To this day, the general public is unaware that alongside the Ukrainian People's Republic UNR, and the West Ukrainian People's Republic WUNR, there existed the Hutsul Republic in Eastern Transcarpathia. Hutsulshina is a Ukrainian ethnic cultural region situated in the southeastern Ukrainian Carpathians, and the Hutsuls are a sub ethnic group of Ukrainians residing there. As mentioned earlier, on November 1, 1918, a national uprising took place in Lviv, leading to the establishment of the Western Ukrainian People's Republic. Shortly thereafter, in Bukovina and Transcarpathia, large assemblies voiced their support for these age-old Ukrainian lands to join the WNR. At the same time, in the Rakhiv district, the Hutsul Republic was formed. On November 8, a popular assembly of residents from Yasina and surrounding villages voted in favor of the reunification of Transcarpathian Hutsulshina with Ukraine. A legislative representative body, the Hutsul People's Council, was elected. It was led by former officer of the Austro-Hungarian Army Stepan Klocherak. The executive authority was the main office with its commissions performing ministerial functions. Administrative authorities, gendarmerie and border security were dissolved. To determine Transcarpathia's future, the Hungarian government convened a congress in Budapest on December 10, 1918. The Hutsuls strongly opposed attempts to leave their region within Hungary's jurisdiction. These actions angered the Hungarian government, and by late December, internal troops were introduced into the territory. The Hutsul People's Republic were underground, and on January 7, 1919, it initiated an uprising. All Hungarians were taken captive, and the Ukrainian inhabited settlements claimed by the Republic were liberated. A peaceful life commenced. Contemporary accounts note that the new state had an almost ideal system. Trade was conducted with the WUNR, and the Hutsuls engaged in forestry. Education in schools was conducted in the Ukrainian language. Pensioners received pensions and the needy were provided with the free food. However, in May 1919, the Poles pushed the Ukrainian Galician army out of the Subcarpathian region, and the Republic lost its protection. Romanian forces entered its territory. On June 11, the Hutsul People's Republic was liquidated and its leader were arrested. But the local leaders were so respected that they were eventually released and continued to work in local administration. Stepan Klocherak left for Czechoslovakia, became a lawyer and journalist. After World War II, he was arrested by the Soviets, spent eight years in labor camps and returned to Prague, where he remained under KGB surveillance until the end of his life. The existence of the Hutsul Republic was of immense significance. The Hutsuls of Transcarpathia gained experience in national struggle, state building, and most importantly, they fully recognized themselves as Ukrainians. Once again, they proved that the Ukrainian people have always aspired to live freely and build a state in accordance with European democratic principles. Watch this! If many people are aware of the existence of the Hutsul Republic, even fewer are aware of the national and state activities of Ukrainians in the Far East. Zelenik Klin, Green Witch, is the historical name for the Ukrainian settled territories in that region. After the Far East was annexed by the Russian Empire in the late 19th century, Ukrainian families began to settle there in an organized manner. But even a hundred years before that, participants of the Haidemaka uprising had been exiled to this region. From the late 1880s, free sea transportation from Ukrainian settlers from Odessa was organized. This marked the beginning of mass immigration to the Far East. Peasants were provided with land plots ten times larger than those in the European part of Ukraine. After the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway, the influx of settlers increased significantly. 
By the beginning of the 20th century, Vladivostok was surrounded by predominantly Ukrainian villages. Out of a total population of one and a half million in the Far East, approximately one million were Ukrainians. Cultural life flourished, and after the 1905 revolution, there was a sharp increase in the number of newspapers, magazines and books in the Ukrainian language, as well as the development of public and theatrical life. The events of 1917 led to a surge in the Ukrainian movement, not only in Kyiv, but also in the Far East. On March 25th, the Ukrainian community was established in Vladivostok. By the end of spring, similar organizations were operating in all the region's cities. During this period, all Ukrainian organizations advocated for Ukraine's autonomy. In June, the first All-Ukrainian Congress of the Far East took place, where they decided to demand national and cultural autonomy from the provisional government and the formation of a Ukrainian army. A population census conducted in the summer of 1917 revealed that 40% of the region's population were Ukrainians. During the summer, a series of district councils emerged, which were equivalent to revolutionary councils but organized on an ethnic basis. They claimed not only public activities, but also political leadership among Ukrainians. After the signing of the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, Moscow even recognized these councils as casualties of an independent Ukraine. The leaders of the Ukrainian movement in the region placed their hopes on the Ukrainian People's Republic in Kyiv and welcomed its establishment in November 1917. At this time, the Bolsheviks seized power in Siberia and attempted to take the Green Wedge, but they were defeated. In April 1918, the Third Ukrainian Congress decided to proclaim the Ukrainian Far Eastern Republic and initiate the organization of an army. Unfortunately, they could not create fully equipped and trained military forces due to a shortage of weapons and ammunition. The insurance of Ukrainian passports began. However, the authorities of the Ukrainian People's Republic could not provide adequate support to their compatriots in the Far East, as the armed struggle against the Bolsheviks was intensifying in Ukraine. Moreover, the establishment of a Ukrainian state and even autonomy did not find support from the white armies. Kolchak's government refused to recognize the right to self-determination for Ukrainians, as well as for the other nations of the former empire. Kolchak was also against the creation of Ukrainian military units and forcibly mobilized Ukrainians into his army. After his downfall, only a few units with blue and yellow flags were formed. After the Japanese occupation of Vladivostok, they went underground. In October 1922, the Red Army drove the Japanese out of Vladivostok. All active members of the Ukrainian movement in the Far East were repressed and Ukrainian organizations were disbanded. Fearing the revival of the Ukrainian national movement, the Bolsheviks began a policy of assimilation and resettlement of Russians to the region. Today, almost the entire Ukrainian population of the Far East has been assimilated and russified. Watch this! In addition to Zelenik Klin, Ukrainian movements for statehood existed in Siberia, Kuban, and the Lower Volga region. Unfortunately, in those historical circumstances, Ukrainian statehood was missed and destroyed. However, the history of state building among Ukrainians is a testament to the persistence and resilience of our people. Ukrainians have always sought freedom and independence. Their experiences in Eastern Europe, the Far East and other regions demonstrate the high spirit of a nation that has consistently built state based on principles of respect and democracy, while preserving its unique national identity. The Ukrainian people's quest for freedom did not end in the early 20th century. Even after 100 years, Ukrainians continue to fight for their independence and the existence of their state there is no doubt that they will prevail in this struggle. To be continued.